name is Marty Miller, and I'm going to do another little demonstration here. On a, this is an eight-year-old. Snip's his name. Uh, I've had him for quite a while. Shown him in uh, some rain classes. Uh, he's got his ROM on uh, in the open and the amateur, and he's done pretty good for me. Um, I haven't ridden him in a while, so uh, get some little kinks out of him here. But uh, to advance from the little. Uh, from uh, starting a colt to uh, a little more finished horse. Uh, I got the shank bit on him here, which I moved from a snaffle to a shank. And uh, I'm gonna do a lot of the same things as I do with the colt. Um, just to show a little more of the, little more of the advanced uh, part of it. One thing I'm gonna do when I first get on them, I'm gonna be able to flex their head one way, and then the other. I want him to be nice and given. He's not really, he's wanting to turn his head up just a little bit there for me, but that's okay for now. Be able to flex both ways without him moving off. My legs aren't moving, so therefore he shouldn't move. Even if they are moving, they're not engaged to a forward, forward movement. Now I'll start off to the right here, and I'll work on this front leg here again same as I did on the colt. So everything I do is based off of what my training was in the first part of my uh, as a colt, as a baby. I'm going to bring his head in. I'm going to use my outside leg to push this wherever it needs to be. If he's too much hind quarters, I move my leg forward and push him up with, uh, with my further forward up by the girth. I'm going to work on this front inside leg here. I might use both of my legs to push them up in that. And I want to be nice and soft. As you can see, I'm still working on that front inside leg with the rhythm of my hand, with his leg. Now I might add a little more hind quarters just to push him up into that bridle there a little bit, just to soften him up a little bit more. And I'll slowly use two reins with this to uh, get him to where he's uh, starting to enter in. He already knows how to do that, but he'll make them a lot nicer once we get, get to that point. Now I'll stop. Now I'll go to the other way. I'll get his head over. I might try to neck rein him over just with the head. Like I said, I haven't ridden him in a while, so we need to tune him up a little bit. Now I'll come this way. The same thing. I work on the inside leg. This is an exercise I do every time I get on. It helps them get softer. It helps them get their feet underneath them to prepare for what I'm going to do later, whatever that may be. I can push his hindquarters up just a little bit here. And I'm working on this leg and this leg. So my body is going to tell me where I need to push more or less. My spurs are for correction. They're not for speed or punishment at all. They're to help me aid and guide his horse through these things. Okay, this here is pretty good. Next thing I'll do is go and I'll go back to the to the right and I'll trot. And I want to use my body into a trot position. I want to I might walk off to start with, but I want to set my body up to go to the right. Which I'll, my inside leg might be up just a little bit, and my outside leg might be back just a little bit, depending on where I need to be, how the horse is shaped up when I start walking. But to start with, I'm just going to lift my body up and squeeze maybe up here. And if I need to go on down my leg, I will. To start with, and he should be okay with this, just walk off. I just squeezed up here, he walked off. Now I'll set my body as a turn. And I'll keep my leg in timing, my inside leg in timing with this leg here. I like to walk forward, walk, walk. I want to walk with this horse. That's all I want to do for right now. I might apply a little bit of hind leg in there. My left leg is going to be back to push this hind leg up. And I might use my inside leg as this leg is coming up. I might squeeze and push with that, 
with my inside leg to help draw that up. If not, all I want to do is have this. And we don't need that. So I want to push and drive and still work on this front inside leg to drive this inside leg forward. Might be a little bit not as far forward as I would like. But I'm going to use my body and, and my rhythm of my body and my legs to aid me through these things. Now, I might go ahead and bump them up into a try. And I'll try to use one hand as much as possible, but I will go two-handed if I need to, to help him out. And eventually he'll just be one-handed all the time, or, you know, for, for a while. And then we got to come back and teach him more and better. I'll bump him up into a trot. I'll just move my body and squeeze the same way as I did at a walk. I'll just squeeze. At the same time, my legs are both hitting the horse the same amount of pressure at the same time. The reason I do that is because when I lope, it's going to be a little bit different. leave him alone a little bit. I might come back in, get one inch to look to the outside. I might come in and hang in here. I might squeeze with my leg to drive him forward with, with his legs. I might use my outside leg a little bit more back here to push. Use my inside leg to draw that front end up. More in a straighter position there. You can see him relaxing. He's finding the bit where he needs to be on his own now. My hands don't have to do that much work if I just hang in here. You'll find that release himself. I might pull the release just a little bit with my hands. Here again, I like to have my hands maybe like this, and then put my pinky on the inside rein. That way it's almost the neck rein, but it's not quite, and I can still pull that inside leg up. Now I can draw my inside leg out and just come over a little bit here and try it in a smaller, tighter circle. Only got a little bit of a round pin here, so I can't really go in a big, big circle. So I might let him go and let him find that spot again. Really, maybe look to the outside too much, and I might ask him again to come back in. I'm gonna go ahead and stop now. I'm just gonna stop my body, maybe drop my heel, maybe drop my back, and on down. I quit riding, so he quits. Now I might come off the fence here a little bit. I might ask for a little bit of a spin here, just to stay in this direction. I might pull his head in. Now if I can have his neck soft and his shoulder soft, he can move his hind in that away. And he wouldn't be staying underneath himself in the inside hind leg there. He'd be pivoting on the outside leg. Get him a little bit softer there. Now I can, that's good enough for now. I might speed him up a little bit later, but I want correct body posture in him, myself and the horse, and then we can move on to a, a, a little faster. To start with, I need that softness through his neck. If I don't, it's like a two by four. If you pull here, that's gonna go that way. So I need, to, I need to learn how to do that with myself. This way is basically the same way the other way. Everything's just uh, inside. I'm going to keep it simple. And timing. He's looking to the outside. His ear's still looking out. His eye's still looking out. I might hang in here, push him, until that ear flickers in just a little bit. There. There. I'll just leave him alone there a little bit. Now I might go ahead and bump him up into a trot, squeeze on both legs, and lift up, and just go with the trot. My body's going to trot. I don't want to be bouncing all over the place. I want a nice, soft, solid trot. And therefore, it comes in handy to know how many feet a horse has. In a walk, they have a four beat. Four beat, that's a four beat gait. The trot is a two beat gait. A lope is a three-beat gate. So it really helps to understand all that stuff. 
you know, and the trucks are running diagonal, left front to right hind, and right front to left hind. So, it really helps to understand that you want to really advance your horse. I don't do a lot of posting, I do every now and then. From in a longer trot, I might post a little bit, but a lot of times I just sit down and try to ride, stay in timing with the horse. I know some people can get better timing with posting, that's fine too. I might go ahead and ask him to come in. I'll relax my inside leg and push with my outside leg just a little bit. Just open up that door. Now I might squeeze my inside leg and push him out. I want that head and everything to stay about the same. I know he's a little bit in, too much maybe, but he's not really paying attention to me on the inside yet there. I might come on in and stop. Just stop my body and leave him alone. I might ask for a left spin here. Just to work on his front end, or his front end here. I want to get timing with his legs, with my hand, asking him to step to the inside here. Just a nice soft, get his feet underneath him. I'll stop him and I just stop my body. I quit asking here and quit, I just stop. And that is where the horse can stop too, he can find that. I let him rest a little bit here, a little out of shape. I might go ahead and lope off to the right here pretty soon. When I go off to the right, I want to put my body in the right position, right lead position. Which, if a horse is loping, the right leg is in front of the left leg. So that would be a right lead. So I need to understand that. When they're loping, each stride, they're going to, it's going to be the left hind and then the two diagonals, and then they're going to come off on the right front. That is a, uh, that's left, left hind, the two diagonals, and then right. That's going to be a stride. They do that every stride if you're on the right lead. So when I, and I need to understand that, and their hind quarter is going to be in a little bit, their head's going to be in a little bit, their shoulders might be straight up and down. So if I understand that, I can lope off in a right lead. So I'm going to put my body back just a little bit on this side and my right leg forward, the same as a horse. And I'm just going to lope off into a, low, a, a right lead position. If you're in this position, in a wrong lead, in a left lead, and you're trying to lope to the right, your horse is probably not going to lope off right away. He's just going to want to stay, he, he can't do it physically because you're in a, you don't open that door for him to go off to the right. And that's why a lot of horses will trot before they lope. So, if I can set my body up in a right lead here, I just squeeze up, I'll push his hind in the just a little bit and get his head to the inside. All that will do is set him up to be, everything is in a right lead position. His right leg is maybe reaching a little further forward, his right hind is reaching a little further forward. Now, when I come around, I just lean forward, and pop up into a lope. When I'm loping, I'm going to have to understand each stride. As you can see, he's landing back there first on the left hind, and then the right, and then the right hind, and the right and the left front are coming together, landing at the same time. And he's coming off on his inside front at the last. Then he starts all over again. We can understand that. And we can understand how to improve a horse's load. And we can ride with the horse a lot better. And they're a lot freer. They're a lot happier. I'm still pulling on the inside rein here just a little bit. This is a little tight area here. So I can lope over. Keep him up. My body's still in a low position, so he better not stop, he better not slow down or nothing. So, or he might slow down, but he's in a low. I might go ahead and stop here, just stop my body. 
let him find it. If he doesn't, I'm going to go ahead and pull him up, back him up quite a bit. So I want to be able to be prepared. If he doesn't, if he does make that mistake, I want to be able to pull up, keep my body here, and still grab him and pull him back a little bit. But I'm going to give him that chance to make that mistake. I might go ahead and spin here again. As you can see, I stayed one way. I didn't go change a lot of directions. I might change directions here pretty soon to work on a lead change. I might speed him up a little bit here. There. Even if you're doing like team pinning and stuff like that, I team pin off of him too. But if you go back and forth, that's for later. That's for working. That's for competition or whatever. I'll train and, and warm him up one way and then I'll go out there. Then once you actually turn to the left, he's actually going to the left. When you turn to the right, he's actually going to the right. Instead of back and forth all the time. Changing his directions is, I like to go one way all the time to keep his mind to the direction I'm going. If I'm always changing directions, like doing figure eights and stuff, he's gonna wanna think the other direction. So I'm going to be aware of that. Here again, I'm very trotted, just a stride or two. So I'm going to keep my body in a single left lead position. This leg's a little forward, my right leg's a little back. This side, I'm going to push him a little bit here. Teach him how to come in, especially in this tight area. Try to push him up there just a little bit. He's opening his mouth because he's not really paying attention. As soon as he starts getting lighter and softer, he'll quit opening his mouth and play around. They're not pulling on him that hard. Just a little bit, at least here and there. So you can pay attention. You know he's paying attention. And I want a nice, quiet, soft walk. I don't want his head up and being bothered by anything. I'll do it in a 
walk here. I'll come in and I'll switch. I'm, I ain't gonna switch leads. What I like to say is I push the hind quarter so far to the right and push the shoulder so far to the left that it looks like we're going to the left. But in the horse's mind, we're still going to the right. I want him to be set up as a right lead as much as possible. I know we're, to us it's like going to the left, but I like to put it as we're pushing them so far around that, it, that we end up going to the right. But we're gonna, I like to keep him at, in, a, in a right lead position so much. And that will help me change leads because when I go to a left to a right lead, he'll keep his shoulders straight and his hind quarters will come around. A lot of times it's a lot harder for a horse to do a lead change with a, uh, if you just get the front end, they'll do a lead change in the front end, the hind end will go find that away. But what that does is they switch in the front and they can't switch in the back. So this little exercise I've learned, and he had a problem switching in the front and not in the back. So I found, you know, doing little, uh, like in a lope, lope around and end up loping like this. So far, basically if I was loping, I'd be doing that. I'd be doing a counter canter, but I'll also be basically staying in the right. Now I'm over here again. I'll go ahead and lope off and show you how I'm, what I'm trying to do here. I might use two hands here. Help me out. This is going to be pretty tight, pretty hard on it. I'm going to stay pushing. As you can see, I'm going to push his hind quarters out. Now I might go ahead and switch. I'm going to do the same on this side. He's still not really that soft, but go ahead and show you. I'll go ahead and set him up for this way. Not trying to spur him there, it's just trying to keep the body down there. Push him, push him, push him, push him out, push him out. Set him up for a right knee. Now, that will help get that hind quarter in. I was a little bit sloppy there, but that's uh, the idea. I got a small area here, so trying to get everything together that really helps to teach the horse to do a lead change and how to get them underneath themselves a little bit better. So, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Now, if I get him where, where he should be, I should be able to drop my reins and just go. Go on the spin. Should be able to stop. Maybe set him up this way. And do a spin. He should be. He should stay right there because my body, my heels drop, my legs in. He should be able to stay. So maybe speed him up a little bit. Stop. There. Speed him up. A, set up for a right spin. Let's say locked into me on this. When I go forward, I should be able to lope off. Sit down, roll back. Set up for right lead, just right off. Position. Around a little 
Okay. That's how I, uh, this is a little more finished horse. I know I had a, uh, I haven't had a ride on him in a while. It's the first ride I've had on him for a while. So he's not as soft as I'd like to have him, but sort of an understanding of what I look for and what I do in a horse. And it all comes from body language. It's all I have to teach myself how to teach the horse. We bring them into our world. I think it's our duty to under try to understand their their language, which is body language. If I pull up on the rein, they should give and I release. It's my duty to release and understand that. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, my name is Marty Miller and this is Snip. He's an eight-year-old gilding. And uh, we'll catch you next time. All right, thanks.